Hello everybody and welcome back to Jack's Corner. I'm Tarzan Bonanno and with me as always is our founder Jack Figgle. How you doing Jack? Good Tarzan, thank you. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to him forever. How you doing and what's up? Yes, we're back to, to glory to Jesus Christ for our greeting. We passed through the Paschal or Easter season now with Ascension having been a few days ago. And, um, and we're uh, preparing for Pentecost this coming Sunday. Um, and there's another thing that's unique about this week that perhaps some of our listeners don't, don't realize is in this interim period between Ascension and Pentecost, you will not hear the prayer in any of our services, Heavenly, Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, because we're waiting for the Holy Spirit to arrive on Sunday, and therefore he hasn't got here yet, so we don't pray to him yet. Yes. Yes. Uh, so that's one of the things about uh, when we prepare the daily office files that we send out and put on the app, is we have to take Heavenly King out for these eight days in between the two feasts from Ascension to Pentecost. So a little bit of liturgical trivia. Yeah, similar to how um, I was going to do the Latin, uh, Alleluia is removed for all of Lent, right? Because uh, we're waiting for it. I think Alleluia yeah. is like added during Lent for you guys, for the That's Eastern right. Church. That's right. Yeah. At, at the precepts of my liturgy, the, the Alleluia replaced the Prochimodon. Yeah, but in the in the Latin West, Alleluia is yeah. removed. We bury the Alleluia. Some people right. actually bury like a wooden thing that says Alleluia in the ground until he, until Lent is over. Oh, I I had heard about that one. Oh, yeah. traditions, they're all yeah. goofy. Yep. Well, they're they they had a reason. At one time. Yep. All right. So um, we're going to have to uh, uh, backtrack a little bit on our sequential lineage here in that uh, I accidentally skipped over uh, a Oriental Lumen Euro East conference uh, when we did our, our last session of the audience with Peter Bartholomew for the pilgrimage, the first pilgrimage, in that we had a uh, Euro East, we called it number three, was the third one in Istanbul in the year 2010. So between 2008 and 2014, we had a conference. So we're going to talk about that conference uh, in this episode. Okay. A little time jump for those who are listening in chronic chronological order of the publications. Right. So... So we're going to go back to, uh, it was uh, July of 2010, and uh, we scheduled an Oriental Illumin Conference in Constantinople, in Istanbul, with speakers and plenary uh, discussion sessions, but then a whole bunch of uh, tourist visits and places of interest uh, through the whole week. So it was sort of half pilgrimage, half academic conference and half prayer time so it was it was quite a mixture and because we were there an entire week uh, we actually scheduled two occurrences to meet with patriarch bartholomew face to face uh with the whole group uh, so i'm gonna gonna talk about both of those uh, uh today the the first was actually uh the day after we arrived um, we arrived on a Sunday and gave everyone time to go to liturgy or have free time, recover from jet lag, uh, whatever. Uh, and then uh, most of the day was free until we had dinner uh, at the hotel, a prayer service, our opening 11 to the Holy Spirit. And then that first evening, His All Holiness came to our hotel and addressed our group with a welcoming uh, speech. It was uh, it was very exciting because I was told, and I think I mentioned before, that it's a very rare occasion for the patriarch to leave the Fenar to go see a group. Yes, all those groups come to visit him and come to him in his uh, little enclave uh, and his audience rooms. But in this case, 
he was willing to travel uh, to the hotel and give us a keynote welcome address uh, at uh, at the Hilton. Talk about it a was, private meeting. Yes, yes, it was. It was just our group uh, in one of the hotel ballrooms. Uh, meeting rooms was not the ballroom, but the meeting room. And uh, this trip, we were in the Hilton Hotel with our group. In previous years, we had been in the uh, uh, the Marmara Hotel on Taxing Square. And this time, we went up a little little upscale, a little further away from Taxing because it was across the street from the Roman Catholic Cathedral. And in order to save one day of the charter bus um, of having to take us to and from the cathedral for our divine liturgy, uh, we spent most of the time at the hotel and had our meetings there and uh, were able to save on uh, on bus costs uh, and, and charter bus. Um, we had uh, a group of about 40 people uh, in total for that conference. And so we all gathered in uh, one of the, the large meeting rooms where his all holists came in. Um, uh, I, of course, went over to greet him. Actually, as I recall, uh, because we were anxious to start and were waiting for him, I went up into the lobby uh, of the hotel and waited for him there and then escorted him down into the ballroom or the meeting room because it was in the basement. It was a bit of a ways away from the front door, and I didn't want him to get lost. Fair so enough. I thought I'd give him the courtesy, and it was interesting. You know, we we see the Pope travels with a whole entourage of 50 people or so, and the President travels with all his Secret Service detail and other aides and everything. The Patriarch showed up in a nice black limousine, with his driver, and that was it. It was just him and his driver. Very low key, uh, very, very humble in my opinion. And uh, just, you know, very, very interested in what we were doing and for him to take an entire hour to come to the hotel, uh, welcome us to Istanbul and say a few words um, uh, about, about our conferences. Uh, I believe that was the speech in which he uh, used the famous line or the line that I like to re repeat, uh, where he said, although you may consider yourselves as grassroots, I'm convinced your movement is rooted in heaven. <laughs> uh, and I don't, I don't think he can get much better compliment from the patriarchal Constantinople than that archbishop uh, in blind from Chrysostom till today. Was so, that the uh, was that the line that was used in the the trailer on YouTube and the podcast? Yes, yes. So yeah. Rem yeah, pretty cool. Uh, so so he he comes came in and uh, uh, we of course we had a, a chair for him up in the front of the room and we all had our seats and. Uh, we were holding uh, everything to start once he got there. Um, and uh, so he arrived. Uh, I escorted him to his seat. And then uh, I got up to the podium and, and gave a short welcome. Of course, I did have to introduce him to, to everyone. Everybody, of course, knew who he was. Uh, and then uh, uh, he got up and uh, gave his little prepared remarks in which he was of course very complimentary and welcomed us and it was it was just a very very uh, wonderful encounter with him when he was done speaking uh, I got up and I presented to him uh, the conference icon uh, for every orange Lumen conference I pick an icon from the Eastern tradition that's symbolic of the theme of that particular conference and the theme for that conference, or H. L. Lumen Euro East Three, was councils of the church. And so I used the icon of the first ecumenical council, which is actually the feast day that we had yesterday, the Sunday between Ascension and Pentecost on the Byzantine calendar, is the Sunday of the first ecumenical council. Mm. Uh, so uh, 
In fact, this is very timely for us to have this podcast going out on this particular day. So I had very uh, uh, lovely image of uh, the first council uh, that I uh, purchased, of course, for the patriarch, because you get so many icons as gifts, uh, you have to, by protocol and just by being uh, honoring his his position, it's a painted icon and not a print. And so you you need to really you know when you give a gift like that or when I give an icon gift to the Pope, uh, it's a painted original. It's not just a print on a piece of wood. <laughs> uh, um, and then, uh, and so after I presented him with the icon and showed him the brass plate that we put on the back that commemorates the date and the conference, um, he then turns to me and surprisingly says, oh, I have something for you. Uh, and uh, I have a picture of him giving me something while I'm holding the icon with him in front of the room. But unfortunately for the life of me, I can't remember what it was. Uh, it it must have been something small, uh, a medallion of some sort. I will have to look into my uh, gatherings of collecting collectibles and knickknacks and try to remember which one it was. Unfortunately, I don't have a, a clear photograph of like holding it up or anything to show what it was. I just have the picture of him giving it to me. In fact, he's holding the icon at the same time, so he's in in some ways shielding the exchange of the gift from the rest of the audience. You know, and who actually sees it going on, or or me, him, and the cameraman who picked up the picture. Funny. Uh, then uh, after him, uh, we had uh, two of the uh, Catholic bishops that were with us were, of course, our co-patron, Bishop John Michael Bodine, but we also had invited as a speaker on the topic, Archbishop Cyril Vassal, who at that time was the secretary of the Congregation for Eastern Churches at the Vatican, which meant uh, symbolically he was the second highest ranking Eastern Catholic, uh, other than patriarchs themselves, uh, in the Catholic Church. And yeah. because he worked at the Vatican, it actually gave him even more access to the Pope than a patriarch would have because he was there day in and day out dealing on uh, issues for all Eastern Catholics uh, rather than just a, a single church. So having Cyril Vassal there as one of our speakers and the opportunity to meet Patriarch Bartholomew, which I don't think they had ever met before, uh, was another special occasion. And... Uh, Archbishop Cyril said a few words, but not many, because uh, English is not one of his uh, native languages. He was born in Slovakia, and so he only said a few words. And a Bishop John Michael had a prepared speech um, in which he, he welcomed uh, and welcomed the, uh, the patriarch uh, and thanked him for coming and giving us his support. And so that was a nice, warm and fuzzy speech uh, that Bishop John Michael gave him. And then after sort of the formalities were over, um, we then had a reception of, uh, you know, some snacks and uh, typical Oriental Illumin fare of bottles of wine uh, to help with the dialogues that were going on amongst people and turns into a, turned it into a nice little party. Uh, and uh, everyone had the opportunity one by one to go up and greet the patriarch, get his blessing uh, and greet him one by one. So I have a whole folder of pictures where the photographer took a picture of each person uh, going up to greet him. And then there were a few groups that uh, stopped and posed with him. Uh, one was uh, a bunch of uh, uh, Ukrainian Catholics that were all on the trip together. So they they stopped and had a, a, a group picture with them. Uh, and uh, in that picture, we also, in addition to Archbishop Cyril, uh, as uh, the secretary of the congregation, our commander, Robert Taft, was hey. another speaker, another speaker at the conference 
And I, uh, I think that was perhaps the last conference he attended, although he may have come to a few more in Washington. But he was there, uh, and from the first Euroese conference, this being the third, if you remember, that was when Patriarch Bartholomew gave him the second pectoral cross. Yes. And so the photograph, the group picture of Taft uh, with the Patriarch, he's wearing both his pectoral crosses. Uh, Father Taft is, yeah. Uh, so uh, it was it was a very joyous evening. It was a great way to start, and uh, uh, you know we we just really uh, were very honored to have His All Holiness come and spend time with us. Uh, and then uh, he left. He spent oh I don't know maybe an hour or more with us at the reception. The chance for everybody to greet him and. Uh, uh, and again, it was in the hotel, not at his residence or his office. So it was, it was, you know, quite a special event. Um, then later in the week, after we had a couple of days of formal plenary talks in different places of Istanbul, uh, we took a boat ride out to Halki, the island where the monastery is. Uh, we went to. Uh, other sites such as Hagia Sophia and the Chora uh, the Church uh, of uh, the Church of Christ in Oran, in the fields, as they call it. Uh, and then we coordinated a visit to the Balakli Monastery be, to be the same morning that His All Holiness was going there uh, to have a memorial service for the passing of Patriarch Athanagoras. Mm. Uh, it was, uh, you know, the anniversary date of his memorial, and the Patriarch goes there every year at noon to have a short memorial service in the Slavic world that I come from. We call it a panachina. Uh I'm not sure what the Greek equivalent is, but anyway, it's a memorial service. And uh, <clears throat> we went with him to uh, the cemetery and he stood at the at the grave. Now, the the tombs of the patriarchs at Balakli, which is sort of the collection of them in Istanbul. There's I don't know the last four or five patriarchs are all buried at this monastery, uh, relatively close to the Fanar. Um, they are large granite and marble stones above ground. Yeah. So they're about three feet tall, three feet wide, and of course seven or eight feet long. And uh, they have a you know lots of words inscription on the top on the lid, if you will, of who's there and uh, what they were known for. So Athanagoras is there, and uh, uh, again it was uh, a reminiscence of the first Ray Lumen when we went to that same monastery that Patriarch Gregorius, who was with us on the first OL conference, had a memorial service in Greek, or I'm sorry, in Arabic, uh, and now Patriarch Bartholomew was having the same service uh, with us there uh, in Greek. So hey. we were having a little bit of deja vu, doing the same things over again with Patriarch uh, Bartholomew. What was very interesting is I had one picture uh, of the memorial service with Archbishop Cyril Vassal in the background. <laughs> so you have the number two Catholic Eastern Rite hierarch in the world praying there alongside, not next to, but certainly behind and in invisible sight uh, for the repose of a, an Orthodox patriarch. Yeah. So it was, it was, I thought, quite an ecumenical uh, kind of uh, event and then it uh, uh, after the memorial service was over uh, the patriarch invited uh, the hierarchs that were with us to join him in the little grotto in the Balakli monastery uh, where there's a little place for them to sit uh, and relax uh, in the shade uh, and so we had uh Bishop John Michael, Archbishop Cyril Vassal, 
the Patriarch and Metropolitan Callistos mm. all, all sitting together, uh, sharing a cup of tea and passing some sweet Jarell, uh, and just having a nice little friendly visit in the shade like you would on somebody's front porch. Uh, it, it struck me as a very special event uh, for the Patriarch, again, to take the time to the, to spend with us and to uh, uh, just be very comfortable and informal uh, with our little group. And and that uh, was the, the two encounters. Now, we actually went to a, a church, I think it was Cosmos and Damien, where the Patriarch was there at a prayer service as well. So we actually saw him face to face a third time. But the place was so crowded with Greeks that uh, the only thing that was of interest uh, was that uh, Archbishop Cheryl Vassal was escorted to the seat next to the Patriarch in the Krylos on the right. So he was sitting in the chair next to the cathedral or the cathedra uh, uh, throne and opposite the Patriarch in the choir stalls on the other side. Bishop John Michael and Metropolitan Callistos were seated side by side, dressed almost identically in a uh, long black riasa and the black round stovepipe type hat, Kabla Kabalaska. And, you know, they both looked to be as orthodox as you can get, uh, as as was Archbishop Jerobosl. So uh, the two Eastern Rite hierarchs just fit right in with all the Orthodox, and it, it seemed like it it just struck me as, why aren't we just all one church? You know, we certainly act like it, we look like it, and and we are friends. Yeah. Uh, friends in Christ. And uh, so, uh, unfortunately, that was, you know, in the year 2010, and here we are 14 years later, and although we are making progress, I think, uh, Unfortunately, uh, higher level priorities of war and democracy and economy have got everyone's attention. And the fact that we are making such great progress on the ecumenical front is being overshadowed by all the other issues uh, that we that we're facing. Oh well, but personally, I think this is the only important uh, information out there. Yeah. Well, 14 years ago, it, it, you know, it felt real good and real comfortable uh, that we were meeting and that we had uh, such a, a warm and friendly relationship with his all holiness. And uh, so anyway, that was that was our trip in 2014 for the Euro East. Sorry, in 2010 for the Euro East three uh, conference in Constantinople. All right. Well, since that. Uh wraps it all up thank you so much for that story um i always love when i hear cows just pop into there because as you know on the uh oltv channel we're still doing uh his reflections from until pentecost so i guess it just ended um but yeah all right so thank you all for coming to this episode uh thank you for telling the story jack and uh We'll see you guys next week. A blessing. Goodbye.